What's up you guys, my name is Diego and uh, today I'm going to be going over two examples of chain rule. So the first example we have is this equation right here, which is e to the x squared minus x plus the square root of 5x plus 1. This actually should be inside the radical. So first off we're going to rewrite this part just to make it a little bit easier. Um, so we get this is equal to e to the x squared minus x plus 5x plus 1 to the 1 half power. And um, this is going to be useful when we're trying to apply chain rule. So to go into the first derivative, we get f prime of x equals, we take the derivative of this one right here first, the e to the x squared minus x, which is just itself times the derivative of the inside function, which is chain rule. So we get e to the x squared minus x times 2x plus 1, since this is the derivative of this inside function. So there goes the derivative of this. Now we have to find the derivative of this. So we get plus 1 half because we bring down the power from up here. We were using this. So we bring this power down. It gets 1 half. 5x plus 1 stays the same. Then we subtract it from up here. Subtract 1 from the um, previous power. So it gets negative 1 half. And then once again, you have to multiply times the derivative of the inside. So you, that's just five because the derivative of five X plus one is five. So we can rewrite this. Um, we can get this five and this one half and combine it. So it would be five halves times five X plus one to the negative one half power. And then we could bring this down to the denominator of five halves. So it would be five over two times five X plus one to the one half. And then we can change this one half back to the radical. And then once you get that, you plug this back into the answer along with this part. And you get 2x plus 1 um, to the ex squared minus x plus 5 over 2 radical 5x plus 1. That's the first one. Now let's move on to the second one. The second one is a little bit more simple, in my opinion. Um, this one is 10 plus 1 fourth sine. Uh, and inside sine, there's 10 pi t. So when we're taking a derivative, the derivative of a constant is nothing. It's just 0, so it goes away. So we would get the 10 goes away, and then we take the derivative of 1 fourth sine uh, 10 pi t, which you take the derivative of the outside function first, which is sine of x. Pretend this is like x. So you get one fourth cosine of whatever's in here. So it's cosine 10 pi over t times the derivative of whatever's inside. So you get the derivative of this, the 10 and the pi, don't get it confused. Those are just constants because pi is just a number. So if you had 2x, the derivative of that would just be 2. So since 10 and pi are both constants, the derivative would just be 10 pi. It's, um, since there's a t, it just goes away because you subtract the power and all that. So you would get, um, yeah, so you would get this, 1 fourth cosine 10 pi t times the derivative of the inside, which times 10 pi. You can combine this 10 pi with the 1 fourth and get 10 pi over 4 cosine 10 pi t. And then you can simplify this to simpler, smaller numbers to 5 pi over 2 cosine 10 pi t. And that would be your answer. Uh, I hope this was helpful. If not, I'm sorry. <laughs>